How would you react if you looked at your phone and in an instant learned that your career and everything you've worked towards in your life is probably gone as a result of your own alleged actions? For one man, this moment was caught live on camera and broadcast to tens of thousands of people. It's December 16th, 2022 at the Erupt Gaming Lounge in Bern, Switzerland. Echo Esports, who fields one of the most competitive teams on Earth for World of Warcraft, are competing in a race to be the first to beat a new part of the game. They've brought in top talent to cast this high-profile event, attracting over 75,000 concurrent viewers during the most exciting parts of the stream. One of the casters is Rich Campbell. He's a fan favorite and has been casting for over seven years. He's well known for his over-the-top commentary and being a founder of the biggest organization in streaming OTK. But today, something is off with Rich. Observant viewers notice that he's been checking his phone a lot. At one point, Rich looks like he's seen a ghost. What no one in the room knew at the time was that Rich just saw some serious allegations had been levied against him and posted online. This was the exact moment that Rich knew his career was over. The story of how Rich got to this precise point in his life is nothing short of unbelievable. The only way to understand how Rich's career ends is to understand how it began. Rich grew up in Atlantic City in the 90s. He wanted to be outside and play as a kid, but his mom was worried about him getting into trouble or being a victim of crime in the city. In Rich's own words, it sucked out there. Rich's grandpa had a solution. He was the first person in the family to own a computer, and he helped Rich set up his first computer game, The Land Before Time. Then in November of 2004, a game was released that Rich ended up falling in love with, World of Warcraft. Rich no doubt loved the expansive world building and stories within the game, giving him countless hours of escapism where he could make new friends from the comfort of his bedroom. But Rich couldn't stay there for long. When Rich graduated from high school, it was time for him to go to college, and he got into a pre-med program at NYU. This is a prestigious university in New York City and costs a small fortune to enroll for a year, but it worked out because Rich's parents were supporting him financially to get through school. Once classes started, Rich made a friend named Ethan. Ethan sat behind Rich in philosophy class where Rich would play WoW on his laptop during each lecture and Ethan would watch. The two would talk about the game and it gave them something to do during the mind-numbing lectures. This continued until Rich's parents fell on hard times, so hard that their house was foreclosed on by the bank. Rich's parents weren't alone. Approximately one in every 54 homes in America received a foreclosure notice that year, and 2.6 million Americans lost their jobs. The entire financial system was on the brink of collapse. Today, we know this as the Great Recession of 2008. To Rich, it meant that he couldn't afford school anymore or even a place to live. In the blink of an eye, he had gone from a promising pre-med student to a dropout living on the streets of New York. Rich's future didn't exactly look bright, but even though it was a rough time, he pressed on. He ate donuts and pizza that shops threw away, and he describes this as a pretty formative time in his life. This went on for a couple years until Rich got a job with a new company called Instacart. All he had to do was buy groceries for people through the app and deliver them, and they paid him $40 an hour for this. He did this full time and spent all his free time during the day teaching himself programming, watching streams, and learning as much as he could. He was able to re-enroll at NYU and decided instead of the medical field, he wanted to go back to the hobby that had brought him so much happiness as a child. He studied computer science and creative writing. Rich wanted to make video games. This gave Rich access to NYU's Game Center, a cutting edge department that offered development tools, workspace, and collaboration. A lot of times this collaboration looked like Rich challenging the other students in the Game Center to matches of StarCraft. Not long after re-enrolling, Rich decided that college might not be the best use of his time or money and dropped out. He started working on a mobile game, but it wasn't complete yet, nor was it making him any money. His once lucrative job with Instacart lowered his pay to $8 an hour. Rich knew he was going to be homeless again if he didn't make a choice. He could try to find another high paying job or a job that was going to help him meet his goals in life. One day when thinking about this question, Rich ran into his old friend Ethan on the street. Ethan said he was working at Major League Gaming, a professional and growing esports organization. He told Rich he should come apply for a job. The next day at MLG's office, Rich showed up for his interview and thought he recognized the interviewer Will from somewhere. Most of the questions were to see if Rich had technical knowledge about how to produce videos or streams and he answered honestly that he didn't know about any of that. At the end of the interview, Will said, didn't I play StarCraft against you at the Game Center? Rich immediately remembered where he recognized Will from and said, yeah. Will replied, you got the job. 
Rich loved the job so much that he would stay at the office all day and night learning new things. He often slept at the office, casted over VODs, and made videos that he knew would never see the light of day just to practice. He was completely in love with the work. He started to dream of being a caster. He had finally found a goal that he truly cared about. Not long after Rich started his new job, Chris Puckett, a caster for MLG at the time, walked into the room and said, does anyone know any local New York talent? I'm getting married and I need someone to cast the Rocket League Grand Finals. Rich said, Chris, can I try it? And Chris replied, yeah. Rich had never casted before and now he was casting the grand finals of the Rocket League tour at MLG. Rich was extremely nervous but found comfort in the fact that he had a veteran caster, Benson, working alongside him. Feel free to tweet out at me and Ben yep. if you think anyone at should. At at Benson underscore you. My Twitter is at Rich W. Campbell and yours is at Benson underscore you. That, that's the Twitter. I am not Tinkerbell. named Tinkerbell. From that moment on, Rich Campbell was a caster. Rich quickly found that there wasn't enough work since casting typically only happens for larger events, at least casting that can pay the bills. He started taking any work that any of the other casters didn't want to do. In fact, he would do just about anything for work. Rich started casting World of Warcraft events along with Call of Duty. Rich still loved talking about World of Warcraft and got an idea to start a podcast where he could do just that, co-hosted by his friend and streamer Hot at 89. They called it All Craft. Their first episode featured an up-and-coming World of Warcraft streamer called Asmongold. After they shot the first episode, Asmund said, so what time next week, boys? After inviting himself to co-host the podcast, the three of them hit it off. Asmongold quickly became Rich's best friend. Asmund's stream really started to take off after this, and so did Rich's casting career. Rich got into a relentless weekly work schedule. Rich would cast Call of Duty every Tuesday in Ohio, and then stream for as long as he could after the cast was over without sleeping. Then Wednesday early in the morning, he would get on a plane to Las Vegas, sleep on the plane, and then when the plane landed, immediately go cast H1Z1 for the H1Z1 League. Then he would get back on another plane, sleep on the flight back to Ohio, and cast Call of Duty again. Thursday, he would leave casting half an hour early, Benson would close the show, while Rich went to record that week's episode of Allcraft with Hotted and Asmongold. After Allcraft, Rich would stream as long as he possibly could without sleeping again. Friday, he would sleep, Saturday and Sunday, Rich casted World of Warcraft, and Monday, he would go back to New York City and do his job for MLG, making weekly videos and content. Gradually, Rich started making connections in the gaming industry and getting paid directly from Blizzard, the company that made World of Warcraft, who recognized the value in having a consistent caster that viewers liked. Rich also started to get invited to host larger events, like the South by Southwest Gaming Awards in 2018. South by Southwest is an annual convention that happens to take place in Austin, Texas, where Asmongold lived at the time. The night after Rich got done hosting the event, Asmund invited Rich to go to dinner with him. While there, Asmund brought his friend Sfand. Sfand and Rich hit it off that night, and Sfand became one of Rich's best friends. Sfand didn't stream on Twitch yet, and Asmund had only just recently gotten his sub button. The trio could couldn't have guessed how fast all of their lives were about to change. Within a year, Asmund was averaging 20,000 viewers on Twitch, Sfan started streaming and was pulling 2 to 3,000 viewers and growing, and Rich was casting some of the biggest esports events in the world. Along with Rich's increased profile came greater scrutiny. Rich was an outspoken critic of new changes Blizzard was making to World of Warcraft, which created some friction between him and the company. If he was just a streamer, this might not be a huge deal, but he was on Blizzard's payroll, and to many, he was the face of the company at most of their large events. One clip in particular caught Blizzard's attention in a bad way. Take a break, Richard. You realize I was in a great mood? And I played the game for five minutes and I'm here. I don't need a break. I need to uninstall WoW. This is a game made for anyone who's playing. Look at, look at you. Idiot. Look at you, you idiot. Why are you playing this game? You f***ing dumb shit. You f***ing moron shakes. You f***ing idiots. You dumb why are you playing this f***ing shit? You f***ing morons running around like ants in Bobby Kotick's maze! In early July 2020, Rich posted a video on his YouTube channel called No More Commentating, Here's What's Next. There was a period in time where if you went on the World of Warcraft Twitch channel and you randomly scrolled through, uh, chances were you, you might bump into me. And to call that an, an honor doesn't even... Uh, do it justice. I mean, it was a dream come true. Rich had been fired, but this wasn't the end of Rich's time in the public spotlight. I guess after, after what, six years of being a commentator? I'm not one anymore. Uh, pull that band-aid off. Uh, I guess I'm a streamer now. Which also means I'm now kind of an idiot.
<laughs> streamers are so dumb. <laughs> To support his move to becoming a full-time streamer, Rich moved to Austin. The city had a growing group of streamers at the time, and most of Twitch's biggest personalities lived there. But most of all, it would let Rich be close to his friends Asmongold and Svand. With much less casting and hosting in his life, Rich had time to really lean into streaming. But just living in the same town as his friends wasn't enough for Rich. In October, Rich, Asmongold, Svand, and their friends Tips Out and Mizkif made a huge announcement. Uh, originally, it was just really Rich and I. We had been doing Allcraft at that time for a couple of years together, and we become really good friends. And we wanted to do something more that gave us the opportunity to hang out more and also to work together more. And so we came up with this idea of making an org and building the org around our friends and building the org around friendship in general. The five of them had founded a brand new streaming organization and called it One True King, or OTK for short. OTK was different from a traditional esports org in that they didn't focus solely on putting together teams to compete in events. Instead, they thought of themselves as a lifestyle brand and media production company, not bound to any one game or category on Twitch. The broad focus allowed the group to cover any games or gaming events they wanted, but World of Warcraft still held a special place in Rich's heart. Rich and Asmund continued to produce the Allcraft podcast together, and OTK participated in and hosted several webinars. WoW events with a lot of community support. This is going to be the best WoW event ever. OTK are literally the heroes of the community. Can't wait. 2020 was a great year for Rich with the founding of his new org and his stream gaining over 140,000 new followers on Twitch. He makes me better. He makes me smarter. He shares things with me. And everything that I do, when I do it with Asmin, I have even more fun. I would literally have him around every single part of the day. That's what friends are for. Of course I wish I wanted to have sex with him, because then I would f the sh out of him right after we hung out. In August of the next year, OTK passed Luminosity Gaming to become the most watched streaming organization in the world. They had pulled over 25 million hours of viewership in the previous month alone. Rich's stream was growing at an astronomical rate, gaining 80,000 followers in a month and rising into the top 200 overall most watched streamers on all of Twitch. Rich pushed even harder to grow his stream, and in October of 2021, he did a subathon that lasted from October 17th to October 29th. During this time, he streamed nonstop, bringing in a a lot of new eyes to the channel. Rich was at the forefront of a new wave of content taking Twitch by storm. Final Fantasy XIV Online. Former World of Warcraft players who were unhappy with the state of the game flocked to Final Fantasy, and Rich was one of the biggest streamers supporting this new game. There were plenty of competitive challenges to tackle, but it also served as a way for Rich to have random encounters with fans, and sometimes girls Rich had DM'd. First, your first DM was Do You Live in Canada in March 24th of 2019. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I thought it was you. No, you tweeted some sh to me. Oh my God. Is that from Montreal? Oh, oh my god. Going to Montreal in two weeks. I was going to say, we should have a drink. <laughs> I thought you hit on me first. It was a pretty well known fact among Rich's fans that the main thing he was into outside of streaming was picking up girls. Wait, with my house? Lost. Oh, we should have been. Have you had f with Rich Campbell? Yes. Stories of Rich's one-night stands were common clips, which is why fans were so surprised when Rich finally got into a committed relationship with a serious girlfriend in early 2022. Adult film star Mia Malkova ending up with a terminally online World of Warcraft streamer was a pretty funny matchup and made for some great content. In almost every interview Mia did from then on, she got asked questions about Rich. 100%. You have a type. He has a, he has a pregnant fetish. He really wants to get me pregnant. <laughs> Ooh. That's kind of hot though. He has a what? <laughs> he wants to get me pregnant. On December 15th, Rich tweeted screenshots from this clip with the caption, just had an awkward conversation with my parents that started with, we were on Instagram. The same day, a user named Azalea Lexi tweeted, I know Mia Malkova isn't lying about Rich Campbell's pregnant fetish because he said he wanted to get me pregnant while he assaulted me and then sent me into the streets at 3 a.m. by myself with nowhere to go. She followed it up with another tweet that said, I don't care if you believe me at this point, I'm sick of pretending it didn't happen, so there it is. At the same time, Rich was casting an Echo Esports event in Switzerland. He was on camera the moment he saw the tweets. In the blink of an eye, it looks like Rich's entire career might be over. The next day, Azalea tweeted, If you want the whole account, here it is. Excerpts from the TwitLonger read, Rich and I had a very up and down, on and off friendship and relationship for four years that started towards the end of his career on the Call of Duty desk. Our physical relationship started in Columbus, Ohio in 2019 and was a disaster from there. There were several times during the four years that he made it clear he only viewed me as a 
unbelievable object, but when I would confront him about it, I would get love bombed and gaslit into thinking he cared about me and wanted to be with me. After he lied to me about having a girlfriend for an extended amount of time in June 2021, I didn't speak to him or see him until he called me asking to apologize around the end of July, beginning of August. I always had a deep love for Rich as a person and friend as the beginning of our friendship, he was there for me like not a lot of people are. So I gave him another chance to be friends. He told me he would prove to me that he was working on being a better person and that he wanted to be in my life. Then in October, he began his typical antics and begged me to come to Texas around his subathon. I said no because I did not think it was appropriate to stay with him because I did not want to sleep with him and that I did not trust him. He also came to LA in December of 2021 and asked to see me, but mainly was only asking me to come to his hotel. I said no due to the fact that I was not interested in having sex with him. There was not much communication until I was at a French restaurant, AOC, in the Upper East Side on January 30th of this year with two girlfriends. As the night came to an end around 12 a.m., I Ubered to Rich's apartment in Williamsburg because he asked to see me. We were in the movie theater in his building and talking and he repeatedly kept attempting to get me to lay on him. I repeatedly said, I'm not here to sleep with you and I do not want that. At one point in the theater, he said, I think tonight is the last time I'm ever going to see you. After trying to speak to him for an hour about our relationship and the awful way he treated me, he just continued to deflect and said there's no reason to talk about it because it makes him feel bad. He said that we couldn't stay in that room and needed to go up to his apartment per the apartment rules. I said I don't trust that and he promised me that was the situation, that nothing would happen, and he was respecting the boundary I set. We get upstairs and he starts talking about how hot I would be pregnant. Azalea then went into detail about the rest of what happened at Rich's apartment that night. It's too graphic for YouTube, but if Azalea's account is true, Rich ripped her that night. Azalea described what happened next. Afterwards, I called my friend who I was staying with so I could come back and she wasn't answering because it was late at night and she was already asleep. Rich said I couldn't stay there, so I called hotels around New York City looking for a cheap room. I asked for the nearest subway and it was a 20 minute walk. Without saying anything to him, I left and cried in his lobby as he texted me, you okay? I never replied. I left, went to a sketchy hotel in Chinatown and processed it by myself. I left New York the next day and never spoke to Rich again. She posted messages leading up to the night she described and the UOK text after. As soon as Azalea posted this on Twitter, she started receiving a lot of backlash. Commenters called her a clout chaser and worse. Asmongold had this to say. I want to say a couple of things that uh, I, 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 I've just really got to say something about. Uh, so... Uh, I mean, it, it was a big shock to me. I think it was a shock to everybody. Uh, it, it's hard for me to process what's been going on. And I understand that for a lot of people, you all who might have been fans of, of, of Rich or Allcraft, uh, you, you might have felt that way too. I, I want to say one thing, though, before I, I, I go any farther. You are not on our team. You are not helping us. You are not doing us any favors or doing anyone any favors by calling a girl that comes out and tells this kind of a story a liar. I read a lot of the comments on Twitter, etc. And I saw a lot of people that were saying that it wasn't true, uh, that she's making everything up. Please do not do that. The third thing I want to say is that I read everything. I also know a few other things as well. This is not drama. This is not getting canceled. These are crimes. I don't want people to go in and call these, this is drama. It's not f***ing drama. This is serious. It is as serious as it gets. I took action as soon as I could. And... I... 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 I, I, I don't know. Asmongold backed this up with action, as the same day OTK tweeted, Today we learned of troubling allegations made against one of our founders, Rich Campbell. Rich has resigned from OTK effective immediately. Rich had this to say, I have read the statements made against me today. I will share my side of the story, but need some time to collect my thoughts. OTK has requested that I resign from my position, and I have agreed. 
I will make an update soon. Asmongold saying, I read everything, I also know a few other things as well, begs the question, what are the other things? Are there other skeletons in Rich's closet that we don't know about yet? On December 23rd, one of the most popular content creators in OTK, Jay Schlatt, left the organization. With almost 2 million followers on Twitch and 4 million subs on YouTube, this was a huge loss for the org. The next day on December 24th, longtime streamer Casey Tron had this to say. It was relayed to me by Lexi that Asmin communicated to her there were several other victims and that there are corroborating factors in each story. She told me that she w she is also aware of one other victim that has a similar theater story to hers and others that have stated he without consent. Rich's immediate booting from OTK happened much differently than when another one of OTK's founders, Mizkif, was accused of covering up sexual assault just a couple months before. Mizkif stepped down from his duties with the org pending an investigation and continued to stream. He wasn't kicked off OTK and technically hasn't lost his job with them either. As of the time of this writing, Rich Campbell has remained completely radio silent. If you want to hear the story of exactly what happened with Mizkif and why he's still under investigation at the time of this video, you'll want to watch my Twitch's Darkest Allegations video right here.